What's going on there, guys? Good Monday morning. It is the Earthmaster here on the uh, live stream with an update video on this uh, early October 11th, 2021 date, about 9.14 a.m. California time, where the latest quake on the globe is going to be a 2.6 in the Puerto Rico area. This comes after quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, from yesterday and overnight. Of course, Hawaii having that 6.1 upgraded to a 6.2 just south of the Big Island. Since then, we've seen quite a bit of aftershock activity uh, kind of stretching and working its way up towards the Big Island from the epicenter of that 6.2. Also overnight, uh, a few hours ago, a 6.9 earthquake striking in the Aleutian Islands area. This region right here, quite within the vicinity of where the uh, larger quake struck here a few weeks ago. Oh, that eight-pointer. can't remember the exact date, uh, but it is within that vicinity of where that large earthquake struck uh, some time ago. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on around the globe. Quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, ramping up along the Pacific Plate. And also a whole bunch of solar weather activity coming at us today uh, in a couple hours. There's a 5.1 that struck over here in the Indonesia area. Pretty shallow earthquake um, just a short time ago within the last hour. A little bit of movement around the Solomon, uh, Solomon Islands as well. Uh, nothing significant yet in this area. In fact, uh, nothing really to report here on the USGS map as well as areas up here to the north uh, through the entire Pacific Ring of Fire on the western edge. Nothing at all. Uh, to report in the earthquake department pretty quiet in the south pacific as well uh, the south america region kind of dying off in earthquake activity looks like we only seen uh, within the last few hours a 4.2 earthquake uh, right about the subduction zone of the peru chile trench 4.2 at 63 kilometers um, this other activity is from last night so you take those off uh, pretty quiet down in that region as well kind of a Kind of an eerie scenario right now, just a very quiet around the Pacific Ring of Fire following that um, earthquake up in the Aleutian Trench area. Of course, again, that was a uh, pretty large one, 6.9 earthquake, 69 kilometers into the Aleutian Trench. So we got a little bit of down dip uh, earthquake activity taking place. Um, this, like I say, I was sleeping <laughs> like I should be around, uh, oh, I don't remember what time it struck, about 5 o'clock in the morning, I believe. Um, and it was felt, uh, over some areas. I don't believe this thing triggered any type of tsunami statement, uh, at the time. I can always like to look at that and, uh, just see what, uh, they put out. Yeah, it looks like there wasn't due to the magnitude probably and the, uh, the depth of the earthquake and probably the dynamics of the, uh, uh, slip, uh, when that earthquake struck. But uh, looking over here, afterwards, following that 6.9, we're seeing some aftershock activity. Roughly within the 3 range, looks like a 3.6, the largest aftershock so far within that region. I kind of want to see exactly where that larger quake struck. I don't know if it's been 30 days or not. Let me see here. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely been well over 30 days since that larger quake struck there. So I'd have to search the catalog. But I think it's within the vicinity of the um, that larger eight that struck some time ago, with, roughly within this area. But man, the Aleutian Trench is a pretty active region for earthquakes, large and small. And there's uh, no doubt strain accumulation along this system here is great and high. And uh, earthquakes of uh, many different sizes and magnitudes happen all the time within this region of the Aleutian Trench. But uh, it seems to, at least for now, put a uh, kind of a, a lull, if you will, in the plate movement along the Pacific Plate. Like I said, this area northward and even, even all through the areas through New Zealand and up north towards Fiji. Very, it's just very quiet and eerie. So I we'll have to see exactly what takes place here uh, as far as the Big Island goes following that uh, pretty large earthquake yesterday. It was a 6.2, originally a 6.1. Like I mentioned, uh, USGS upgraded it. 
This activity here on the southeast region, very normal and typical. This is always pretty much what we see during any given day, just that magnitude, this multitude of quakes around 35, um, 30 kilometers or so below the surface. It's been ongoing like that for quite some time. The movement that we seen yesterday, the larger earthquake struck 15, 20 miles to the south of that area. We are kind of noticing a little migration um, northward towards the Big Island uh, and away from the epicenter. That epicenter right here is 6.2. Most of the aftershock activity or movement has been uh, pretty deep, around 35, 36 kilometers or so, the same as this, and uh, kind of working its way northward, it appears, from the aftershock activity. Uh, so no doubt a lot of... Uh, Interesting stuff going on here below the surface, um, volcanic indeed. We'll have to see exactly what this triggers here in the coming days uh, for now, at least for now. Um, just kind of at a standstill. We'll see how that plays out. The West Coast, North American plate up here, Washington and Seattle, very quiet along the Cascadia subduction zone. The trimmer activity continues though. Um, I didn't get a chance to do an update video last night, but the trimmer is still there. This activity is from yesterday, 10-10, 2021. See the movement in the uh, Vancouver Island area stretching down through Seattle and, of course, Northern California. This has been ongoing for a couple weeks now with intense, earth, uh, intense trimmer activity. And uh, we got some high winds out here today, folks. It's really drying out my, uh, drying out my voice box. And uh, it's supposed to be up to 50, 55 mile per hour winds. So I'm hoping the stream does not go down. If it does, I will pull it back up or put it back up soon as um, I'm able to, as soon as the power comes back on. I got generators and stuff, but um, it's best just to wait till the uh, power comes back on permanently. But it sure is drying up my voice box, let me tell you. So there's a the movement. Once again, folks, 592 ep epicenters. Uh, it has not stopped here in a couple weeks. It's been a pretty massive amount of trimmer activity along the Cascadia, to say the least. We'll see what that looks like a little bit later today. Um, lack of activity up here um, not necessarily means that the P, that the uh, trimmer stopped, but uh, uh, you know I just can't help but wonder where the uh, extreme stress is building up here in this area. Only a little earthquake uh, near Oak Bay, Canada, a little 0.9, a little microquake. Uh, 20 kilometers or so. It's a little subduction quake into Northern California, relatively quiet as well, uh, including through the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada down through Ridgecrest. It's just very minor. This activity is just, it's kind of just speckled, if you will, in the region. We don't see any large cluster or unusual swarms in this area. Uh, it just looks kind of quiet for now, folks. A um, little bit of movement along the creeping section through the San Andreas Fault, just on, uh, just through the uh, Diablo Range. Uh, Southern California, just looking kind of spotty and, and quiet as well. It's, I mean, we all, in any given day, we always have earthquake activity in the microquake uh, department. Most of these are microquakes. If you turn on the 2.5, you can see that there's not a lot out there, folks. So this kind of just, it's a little eerie in a way, but uh, these microquakes, they happen. If these things stop happening, then I think plate tectonics has come to a complete halt. But we're always moving out here in California. It's just a little eerie, a little quiet uh, when it comes to the average earthquake activity on any given day here in California. We did see some movement up in Idaho along the Sawtooth Fault system, this activity from last night. So even here, it has gone relatively quiet. Inland into the North American plate, man, extraordinarily quiet. So uh, it's, it's um, kind of a waiting game to see exactly what's going to happen. Just because we have this little one over here, 5.1, doesn't necessarily mean that we're uh, looking at some hot spot earthquake activity throughout the day here. It's just it's quiet everywhere along the Pacific Plate. Uh, we do have a pretty good sized solar storm coming in. Let's go ahead and check out that activity. Um, should be kicking up here within the next hour or two. We've got a G2 class storm. Um, it's a moderate, not anything heavy. But uh, these are pretty common, these G2 class storms, uh, considered a moderate storm on the, uh, on, the G2, on the G scale. G3s are kind of getting up there, but it uh, looks like a, I don't know if we're going to see G3. 
But right now, mid-latitudes looks like 30% chance of geoma uh, geomagnetic storming, 70% uh, chance at the higher latitudes. As you can see here on this map, or at least this chart, we have not seen it kick in yet. When the solar storm, the CME, hits, uh, we'll see this thing ramp up here, way up here. A lot more than what it's doing right now with the KP indexes. They normally turn yellow and red. This will probably be up around the red scale. And um, should reach up here around 5. We'll see what happens when that comes in. Everything right now just kind of calm. The forecast itself calls for... Let's back out of here and see. Uh, where did I see that at? Oh, here we go. Looks like a little bit later, or not too much later, because this is UTC time today, 12 uh, to 1800 in the UTC time. And right now, UTC time sits at uh, 1625. So we're looking at uh, any time now. Any time we should see this, uh, we should see the uh, CME hit and then really ramp up here. Looks like, uh, yeah, not bad. Looks like six on the KP index, uh, G2 storm. Like I mentioned, and uh, looks like that should last into tomorrow. So we'll see what happens tonight with the uh, auroras at the mid and higher latitudes. There's that coronal mass ejection observed on Saturday. It's expected to sweep past Earth. Aurora sky watchers should be alert within the next 48 to 72 hours. This was um, um, a couple days ago, it looks like, when this forecast came out. At least their updated forecast. But uh, as far as the, the maps go and the scales, we're still waiting on it. Sunspot activity, um, kind of, eh, looking a little diminishing here. This one's kind of pointed right at us. Not super dynamic when it comes to the potential for uh, a, major, a major solar flare threat. There is a 50% chance of a C flare with a, uh, only a 10% chance of an M flare uh, for right now. Coronal hole up here to the north, little one here facing us. There's that sunspot that I mentioned, doesn't look super dynamic. Back behind it, maybe on the far side, it looks like some stuff brewing out there. We'll see what that, see what it brings over the next uh, few days or so. But uh, keep an eye on the sky. If you're up in the higher latitudes, they are forecasting that G2 class storm. And uh, should be, like I mentioned, should be kicking up here pretty soon within the next hour or so. All right, guys, uh, let's see what I've got for Yellowstone real quick. wanted to show you what the 6.9 earthquake looks like uh, that struck in the uh, Aleutian Islands uh, earlier this morning. Showed up pretty significantly on pretty much all of the localized stations here in Yellowstone. That's uh, kind of what a large earthquake will look like on the correctly tuned stations. Now, these incorrectly tuned stations, such as, oh, say this one, Joseph's Coat, shows absolutely nothing. I mean, I think even if a... Uh, an asteroid were to hit Earth, it probably wouldn't even register a blip. Um, I, I'm not for sure why they tune those like that. Up here at Mammoth Vault, you can just barely see it. The Hebgen Lake area, if, it, if, if that 6.9 only shows up that little signature, right, compared to all the other ones, what's, it to, what's this other stuff doing? What is all of this other stuff that's showing up significantly in this region but that they got it toned down so much in this area it's just kind of kind of odd Denny creek over here not showing that uh, earthquake as well madison river so i'm not for sure exactly why they tune these down and have them all different but uh they do you know it could be for geyser activity who knows what but uh, the correctly tuned ones at monter um, you know, the, the distant earthquakes and also localized earthquake activity um, can uh, correctly pick up movement within this region. It looks like there was a little bit of microquake activity. Let me see here. At the Norris Junction region, right around here. But then again, that 6.9 just barely showing up here. But let's see what station this is. SHC. Yeah, it's hard to say. But there's some microquake earth earthquake activity taking place here. Just a couple small quakes within the last 24 hours, but no major, no major swarming. There's a little localized quake. All 
All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here and uh, just kind of, I was looking at a, a 9.3 scenario along the Cascadia. Um, 9.3, right? They uh, put this out, uh, looks like 2017 uh, at a depth of about 21.4 kilometers off the coast of Oregon. I'll cover this a little bit more in detail last night. I've always said the epicenter should be right around the region where, oh, I can't remember that town that's up here. Lincoln City, Newport area. Beautiful coast range, but man, is that deadly uh, for the earthquake. But anyway, they have this epicenter set in a region where um, if you if you follow the trimmer a lot on this channel, you'll, you'll know and see that most of the trimmer occurs southern end, stretching up from northern California into Oregon. And it kind of stops right here, maybe right about here, and then it picks up again about Salem northward, Portland northward, into Washington, and then up through the Vancouver Island area. And sometimes we get trimmer within this region, but there's a block area, it seems like, within this vicinity where trimmer almost continuously occurs, right, throughout years, up north and then also down south. But it, but in this region, it just periodically occurs, and it, it doesn't really ever catch up to all the other trimmer movement. And it's odd that they have this, and I shouldn't say odd because it would make sense, right? You got a lot of plate movement, subduction, um, and trimmer activity. But in the region where the trimmer is less, a lot less, they have the epicenter star. This is a little bit more north than, uh, than I thought it would be, but it's within that vicinity of where I think uh, the, uh, the, unzipping of the Cascadia will occur at least as far as the epicenter goes so we'll see oh man we'll see <laughs> hoping that thing holds off for a little while right we don't need that type of devastation um, along the uh, North American coastline all right folks I'm gonna jump off here we'll be back a little bit later and uh, we'll cover some more details have a good day out there stay safe everyone peace out